The MTG Podcast is a virtual space for women and men in the tech and creative industries. Tune in as we put it all on the table, sharing authentic life truths as we sustain and empower each other in search of our tribe. We're more than a designer. We're more than our name badge. We're more than the work we produce. Welcome to the More Than Graphics Podcast. We're We're that that tribe. tribe. What's up, everybody? Oh man, it's a little loud echo in here. I mean, I mean, um, You're tight now. yeah, I know, right? Uh, welcome to the More Than Graphics podcast, everybody. I am Danielle, and I'm Cicely. Uh, I just kind of wanted to reach out and like let everybody know, like this month has been very interesting. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is a live recorded conversation today, so we're in the moment. We're in the fields. We can say those cool things. Happy Stranger Things Day for all my blurs out there who are just living it up in, in real time. Um, I, there's so many cool things happening in and around um, this week. Cool releases. So if you're a geek in any way, shape, or form, this is your moment on Netflix. So, um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to say um, it's been real interesting. Cicely, how is thing in your world? Um, things are good. I'm glad that the month is winding down. School is <laughs> out. So the kids are free. And yeah, I just can't believe um, we kind of talked about this earlier in the week. I just can't believe how fast we've flown through this year. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, if you follow us on Clubhouse, we have been talking about this, how this has been speeding up. Um, maybe not as fast as we want to, or maybe it is going as fast as we want to, um, <laughs> in regards to like how much we've all like taken little bits of nuggets, how things have progressed in our lives and just really kind of finding these, these kind of like single singular release moments where we can just kind of take a breather, let our hair down for a minute, um, just acclimate in the moment, if you will. Um, so I just really encourage people who are out there to just Hang tight, whether you're wanting this to fast forward or you're trying to rewind some things. We hope you find some level of pause or reflection um, to make you just kind of appreciate where you are and where you're trying to go. So, yeah. Um, So this is kind of a really cool, like, moment in my life right now because on this podcast, I'm also, uh, I've got my co-host, Cicely, and I've got this guest that's going to come on the show. And both of them are like perspectively like the equals of my life right now so it's really kind of interesting to have like two besties that are in their own realm of genius that are in their own lanes of superiority and I'm just kind of sitting here like the best friend like rah rah go everybody I feel a little bit in the hot seat so this is going to be like super fun for me to kind of like chill and have these moments these are everyday moments actually that I have with both of these women on a regular basis y'all just witnessing on online right <laughs> that's really kind of how it is So, um, yeah, Cicely, do you want to introduce our guest? Absolutely. All right. Tavia Smith is a content creator, business writer, and journalist and owns Ward Smith Writing Services. Tavia graduated from Western Kentucky University with a BA in journalism and has worked for the Leaf Chronicle newspaper as a crime and crime and courts reporter, Vanderbilt University Medical Center as a communications officer, and as an editor and business writer for the online publication ClarksvilleNow.com. Tavia has collaborated with Octane Design's creative team for a year and specializes in content and social media management. Tavia resides in Tennessee and has been married for about 12 years to her husband and best friend, Eddie. They have one daughter, Eliana, who is a charismatic, creative four-year-old. They foster special needs children and have a feisty Maltese Shih Tzu named Osito, who's been a part of the crew for seven years. When she's not doing all the things, she's enjoying crafting cocktails. She enjoys crafting co- cocktails, party planning, traveling, and bringing real crime and binging real crime shows and documentaries. Welcome, Tavia. Hey. <laughs> like we need to get an applause next time. Like I'll right, definitely be like, like me in a nutshell right there. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she knows my life. <laughs> Now we do, like deep down. Yes, now we know. <laughs> I love this. Okay, so Tavia, you have been a long-term friend. We have yes. definitely enjoyed, I have definitely enjoyed watching you flourish near and far. So it's, this is such a, a great topic mm-hmm. as we kind of wrap up the end of this month and talking about flourish and flourishing in our own way, flourishing in our own lane. So um, we'd love to just kind of hear from you a little bit about your personal story and how you've been able to flourish, especially since in the pandemic. Man, so when I thought about this, I was like really deep in thought because 
flourish. I'm like, how have I flourished? And you know what's so funny? I had to go back to you, Danielle, because that's kind of where I started in the pandemic with my journey. Um, and you kind of encouraged me to like actually take the leap that I needed to take. And I'll tell the story in a very nice way. I was at a job. I was the only woman of color at the job. And it it was a place where there was a lot of microaggressions going on and it was just a lot. It was just an environment I, I really couldn't thrive in. Like I was really trying. I was really trying. And I think I was triggered by some personal things that happened in my life years ago that kind of came full circle while I was at work. Um, and what it was, I'll go ahead and just be real honest. My boss who, let me rewind. I got hit by a car when I was 26 years old and I was working at the newspaper at that time. And I had a certain boss. Well, fast forward 10 years later, I'm working at this new place and they recruit my old boss back to the job. So my old boss kind of tries to put me back where I was, like carry me backwards into that reporter mode when I had came way forward. And that really just wasn't me. I wasn't 23 anymore. I wasn't the in that physical condition I was in, like no, everything about my life had changed in 10 years, you know, got married, had a baby, um, moved, you know, just everything had changed. And when that particular person and not nothing against him, like he's, he's a great person, but it just, it stifled my growth for like a second. I was freaking out. And it's so funny. Cause at that time, how did me, I can't even remember like why we, we started, I, I, I reached out to Danielle because I knew she had done some graphic design and work for me in the past. And I was like, I was kind of like just trying to escape. I was like, for some reason, I feel like it was God. I was just like, I need to talk to Danielle. Like we hadn't really talked in a little bit, but for some reason I just reached out to her and I was like, I can't take this. <laughs> Can you help me like figure out how to launch my own business? That's my dream. That's what I really want to do. I don't know how to do it. And you're genius. So <laughs> help me, like, help me, please. And I mean, you know, as Dan as only Danielle can, she's like, man, you got this dude. Like, I got you. And honestly, it just took off. And I feel like at that particular time, it was like my driving force. Like I would talk to Danielle. She'd be like, well, you need to do this. And, you know, I would do that. It just kept kept me moving forward instead of crashing. And life was still life. And, and um, I was still there. So I was daily fighting, fighting these different things coming my way. But then like on the other side of it, I was growing and flourishing to do my own thing. And um, when the right time hit and everything happened, I was able to transition from that job and jump right into um, my own writing service, which I had done for years as a side hustle, but um, I never thought I could do it full time. And um, Danielle gave me my first assignments. Like, I think she was the first person who really believed in me and was like, you can do this. Like, you've been writing for years. Like, you can do this. So that that was a point in the pandemic that I flourished because during the pandemic as well, like I said, life was life. And so my husband almost died. He got really, really sick. Um, we were in the hospital for a week um, on the COVID floor. He did not have COVID, but he had a septic blood infection and we were on the COVID floor and it was just nerve wracking. So when he got out of the hospital, it's kind of like in, it's kind of like you have these low moments. It's almost like you have to have the low moment to kind of climb back up to the flourish moment. And I feel like even though it's really hard in those low moments when you don't know what's going to happen, it's like when you climb back up and that growth happens, it, you look back and you're grateful for so many things, even during those hard times, you're grateful for so many things that happen. And so when my husband got sick, that kind of created a situation at work where they're like, well, you need to come back to work regardless. And I'm like, well, I have to stuff wounds every day. I'm not going to be able to come back. And from there, that's where it just every day it became a thing. And that's what led me to reaching out to Danielle. Like, um, I know I can't stay here. I'm really kind of tired of corporate right now. Like, I, I don't know how to navigate that right now with all, everything that's on my plate. And then it just kind of went to the next level. And um, I told Danielle all the time, like, dude, you, you saved my sanity because she kept me writing. Like, she kept me busy and showing you're doing this like 
you you're already doing it so what are you scared of like jump and i did i jumped <laughs> right out their door <laughs> and started working remote and i have not looked back and i've enjoyed it it's been a year um this month actually oddly this is the weekend a year ago that i did not return to work this was it this was my last what? day of work yep what? i remember i was going on vacation and i knew then i, I remember it was this weekend it was that sunday i went and cleaned out my office because i knew i knew i couldn't go back wow Yep. Wow. I had yep. no idea that the Ooh, that was, full was so circle. close. Right. Yeah, that was full circle, man. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I looking back, it was those moments that helped me climb up and flourish into what I could be. I love that. And I think that's a huge part of anyone's story is uh, not just the highs, but it's the lows. It's it's the it's the medium in between that allows us to kind of better appreciate that ebb and flow um, of life. It makes us appreciate those moments when it is low and makes us even more appreciate those moments when they're a little bit higher. So that, that's just that level of reciprocation uh, and transformation for you, Tavia. I just yeah. absolutely <laughs> love it. This is awesome. I feel like I just unloaded a lot. <laughs> Two years ago, I was hit by a car, and then two years later. <laughs> Go ahead, Cicely. Go ahead. I know what you get ready to say. <laughs> well, you said life be life, and I was like, I felt that. I Man. felt it. <laughs> Man, it don't stop. It, does it, not it really stop. doesn't. But mm -hmm. I think that's a beautiful testament, and we've talked to so many people throughout the pandemic, and I mean, we've been always joke that we have like a pandemic podcast now because most of our <laughs> time in the podcast has been during the pandemic, but so many people have kind of um, flourished and blossomed out of this like really stifling I love the word the word stifle that you use like this stifling really restricted space and I feel like we've been able to um, hear so many amazing stories like transformation stories like people are blossoming and co coming out of their cocoons throughout the pandemic so I think even um, when you're facing adversity even when life is life in I think it's very important to um, take stock of like, yeah, there was some bad stuff going on, but then look at all the, like, look at how far I've come. And, you know, you have the perfect example with being full circle. This is the exact weekend yeah, that right. you worked that job that was stifling your creativity, that was putting a damper on your life, that was probably making you miserable as well. You didn't yeah, say it, I was saying it for you. Out. <laughs> I'm saying for you. Yeah. But um, I would just say, looking back um, from a year ago and to now, what advice would you offer yourself and anyone else in that same position a year ago to, to flourish like what would you do differently knowing what you know now that would enable you to flourish quicker or maybe get to that place a little bit sooner i think the thing that i really would tell people and i think the pandemic kind of taught us this all of us this in a little form of fashion that you can't be ashamed to choose yourself you can't be ashamed to to say I'm choosing me this time. Like, I'm going to do what I need to do. Because sometimes, I don't know why we put a guilty spin on that. Sometimes you do, like, if we don't choose what's best for us, we really can't help anybody else. And I think um, I was staying out of a loyalty that was really one-sided. And, and I knew it was. But I felt guilty for choosing me at first. Like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> I, like, I like what I do. And I felt like I had to be a strong Black woman. I felt like I had to represent something and i realized you know why i wanted to do that that's not how it was going i was not thriving i was i was going there and doing my best every day and then crying all the way home and like i i, I don't want to do this just because the pandemic was really rampant i had um a little girl i had a special needs foster son at that time like nobody was vaccinated like i was and we it was all those new things we had to think about like we weren't thinking about vaccinations years like as adults years ago, like now we're having to then the politics of it all. And, you know, I live in Tennessee. So um, I think around the time there was uh, the election. So there was just this heavy racial undertone buzz at all times. And I remember the day I remember the most is the, the day after the George Floyd um verdict and i walked in the room and everybody stopped talking and watched me walk all the way to my office and i was like what are they look what are they waiting for what are, what are what am i what am i supposed to do like <laughs> i 
Am I supposed to cheer? What am I supposed to do? Like, right. But you're carrying, and I think me and Daniel were talking about this, we're carrying like this, this sensitivity that comes with just being part of society and, you know, being black women in society, being women of color in society and everybody's expecting you to be a certain way. And it's a lot to carry. It's in, in, you do feel like you have to represent all black people. You know, I'm not bringing my chicken to work kind of feel, you know, <laughs> and it was just, you get tired of, you get emotionally exhausted from that. And I think with the pandemic, with all that was going on in my life, I was just emotionally exhausted. And I realized, and I wouldn't tell anybody, you got to choose you. You got to choose you and your family because you are, they will replace you and go on with their business. You have to do what's best for your mental health. You have to do what's best for your physical health. And you can't be ashamed about it. Even even if people were looking at me crazy because I wore a mask, I was, I was rocking my mask. I still got COVID later, but I was rocking my mask. <laughs> I, 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 and thank you for sharing. And I think it's so important. Me and Danielle talk about this all the time. Like there's so much weight that we carry around as women first and foremost, mm -hmm. and then as black women. And it's so important to like, we're, we're never going to downplay that. So I'm not just saying, oh, yeah, just quit your job, like leave right yeah. now. Like we understand <laughs> that there's so many layers to that. Like if a lot of times you might be the only bre breadwinner in the house. I was a single parent for 10 years. So I could never, I never had the opportunity to just quit. Like that was mm -hmm. never a thing that existed in my realm of possibility for a long time. I could maybe yeah. possibly now, but I like to work. But <laughs> like, there's so much that, you know, people are like, oh, just quit. If, you know, it doesn't make you happy, just stop doing it. It's not that simple for mm -hmm. the majority of people. It so is I'm not. So pointed that out. I had never done that before. And that's why it was so hard. I grew up, um, if there's nothing else we learn how to do, we learn how to work. Like I grew up, in a household where my parents worked two or three jobs. My granddaddy had us working as soon as we could walk, collecting cans to recycle. Like I always worked. And so it was work when I went to therapy later during the pandemic, because I don't feel like that's taboo. There was so much going on that a lot of us, we just needed to unload that in therapy. And I did go and I was really appreciative of that time period where I was able to speak freely, unload, talk about what was on my mind. And um, she was explaining like that is part of, that can be part of your identity, your self values is how you work. And that's why it took me a long time to leave. And like you said, with your situations, like I, we were not in a place where I could just, hey, we balling, like I had to quit this job. No, like, <laughs> so I did, I hung on as long as I could. And um, it was when I knew that I could step out and still make money it, it took a lot. I won't even lie. Like I had to really start believing in myself a lot more and praying really, really hard to, to, you know, get to where I need to be. Like, it was not easy by any means. Like even after I left, I was like, what did I do? <laughs> I don't have health insurance. What did I do? <laughs> so you're right. Like, no, it's not. It's not easy at all. But I think I I think the biggest thing I learned is to thrive. I had to choose myself. Everybody thought I was crazy, um, but I think it was the best thing to do. And nobody wants to ever say they left the job because it sounds horrible, right? Um, mm -hmm. It does. Nobody ever wants to say there were microaggressions or I felt like people were looking at me funny. Like it, it's weird. Like we know it to be true, but to say it out loud in front of people. Who may not understand that? Yeah, that's even hard to do. Yeah, absolutely. you supposed to suck that up and just be like, <laughs> "But I, I went in there and I handled my business and I was, you know, no, it, it can wear you down because that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't been the only one. That wasn't the first time I was the only one. That's that's just the last time I was. You know, yeah. that was it was it had been. I grew up in a rural Kentucky town, so you already know, Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> you already know. Rural Kentucky. I was, and I was in honors classes, and, and I was the only one a lot mm -hmm. of times. So yeah. I learned how to put on this kind of defense mechanism and just do my work and, and not even have to say, but show what I can do. That's kind of how I always have pushed through is to show you know, I don't need to be anything that you need me to be. I'm just going to show you my work and let that speak for itself. 
and I got I had got by for many many years like that, and then I realized I don't really have to. I I can still have a voice. Is why mm-hmm. do I have to silence myself? You know, mm-hmm. absolutely. And if you don't want to hear my voice, this is not where I need to be, and that's okay. That's okay. Some places I realize some places just ain't it ain't for her. it ain't for me. It ain't for, mm-hmm. and it's funny because going from that environment to like a very positive work environment working with octane working with daniela and the ladies from all over the world like it was such a breath of fresh air because it was people like it was just like <laughs> women understood like it was good vibes like mm-hmm. it wasn't you didn't feel any kind of way speaking out loud during a meeting you know yeah it was, I feel like Black History Month, everybody looked at me, you know, in the boardroom, <laughs> like, what do we do, Tavia? And I'm like, <sighs> and I felt a responsibility. Yes. Because I'm not going to let them, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's just, it went from that to like, we really doing some brainstorming, good ideas, how to actually execute a good uh, campaign. Like, mm-hmm. it went from really letting my creativity out. I, I feel like I have been pushing it down for so many years just because I felt like my voice wasn't valid or heard much, you know. We she refer to Tavia at work as the think tank. So anytime we have a sort of kind of <laughs> idea, we're just like, let's just run about Tavia first real quick. I'm like, that sounds good. <laughs> That sounds good. <laughs> well, I, I, absolutely, I want to go back a little bit because you said so many gems in just this whole little segment right here. And so one of the one of the things that I absolutely love and I think that contributes so much more to the scope and realm of entrepreneurship period is that entrepreneurial spirit that you're talking about. The people think that I'm crazy because I have this idea or I have this passion, but I don't know how to get it out. I just know I'm going to do it. And that kind of unspoken truth that we speak to ourselves that people can't see. It's almost like its own, it's like it's almost its own face value system, as you mentioned before. We see it, we can obtain it. Our minds, our hearts are wrapped in it. But for others, it's it's not as much. It still looks like apples and oranges or it's still a very disconnected vision. And that is honestly the difference between what an what an entrepreneur can do and what an entrepreneur is and living into that entrepreneurial f- lifestyle is obtaining and seeing the things that others can't see. And I think that is something that can be said for so many others and other women who are in tech, who are creatives, who are connecting those dots and they see the things they want to see, but they can't necessarily connect those dots. It's kind of like watching, I don't want to say necessarily the... Um, the force between two batteries, you know, when they're a polar opposite, sometimes, you know, that they go together, but they won't go together and you can't see what's pushing and what's connecting. And we're not meant to see what's pushing and connecting. We just hold on to the idea that it does work and it can work. And that's the part that for a lot of concrete thinkers, um, that's harder to understand um, that entrepreneurial way of thinking. Um, but I think that it's such a testimony to, again, your life story, um, to your specific story and how you left this corporate area and went and stepped out on your own, knowing that the pieces are there, but you weren't sure how they connected and how they were going to help you move, um, move yourself forward in a different way. I'm sure once you were able to close those doors, when we were talking in the very beginning, and you were saying, I don't know what to do. And you're kind of, you know, questioning and doubting. I'm sure in that same place, there are so many other women who were also in similar places and doubting their capabilities, their their atten- their intentions for what they want for themselves. And they weren't sure like what to lean on, right? Um, I just think that's a huge testament again to what you can do when you have a strong community, when you have people that are truly for you, when you have representation. So I think those are the things that I really encourage other women out there who are listening um, about maybe stepping out into the unknown, um, you know, <laughs> I'm I'm a huge frozen. Here we go into the unknown, (laughs) you know, the whole, like, I'm not even going to bother singing it because I'm not in that place, but um, it's just that same, that same feeling, you know, we, we know there's something out there. We know that it's there. We just can't nail it and warp it in a way that makes sense right now. So it's going to look crazy to everybody else, but it's going to make absolute math to us. And so um, I just think we need to lean more into those spaces because we just never know how that will truly transform our lives. Not only our, professional careers but our lives our lively stock our livelihood so that's an area of flourish that i feel like has been untapped in our conversations a little bit this month that i'm so glad that tavia can bring 
uh, real <laughs> testimony to today. It's so dope. I just love this. I'm just like, look, all these people. I just, <laughs> they don't even know. They don't even know. I talk to y'all like every day. Like, it's yeah. so funny. Um, but I had like some more to kind of deep dive into um, Flourish for you. I would love to know like um, kind of how you define Flourish. Um, what is, and I think you kind of pretty much said that, um, you know, being able to have the low moments and climb back up to the moments that you, um, that you desire for yourself. So I, I want to say that would be kind of the mm -hmm. definition for that. But if you wanted to add to that, how would you, how else would you define flourish? I think I was telling you a little earlier, like flourish is such a pretty word. Like I don't, I'm a word person. Like I love words and I just think it sounds pretty you know, flourishing, but it's not really a pretty journey sometimes. Like it's not perfect at all. And I, I think when I think of what flourishing is, it's just being your, being at your very best in where you are, like not necessarily having, you know, we all have goals and stuff and it doesn't mean I, I perfectly met my goal and I'm done. It's like, it's just part of that journey when I'm, I'm on the upswing and I'm believing in myself and I'm doing my very, very best with everything I have, like, it may not be a lot sometimes, but what I have, I'm giving it my all. I'm not giving up. Um, you know, I'm flourishing as, as much as I can and blossoming where I'm planted. I think that's what, what made me think of is to bloom where you're planted, like wherever you are, just do your best and give it, give it all you got and believe in yourself. And it sounds all these cliches, but it's, it's, <laughs> we have to, yeah. I mean, we honestly have to, because if I'm being so honest, like, life ain't easy a lot of times mm. and you know i'm a very big mental health advocate to deal with a lot of anxiety and things like that and um those things don't go away they don't pause they don't stop so that you can have a perfect moment in life like you have to live through a lot of hardships you know and that's why i say wherever you're at because mm. you can be in a deep depression and and getting out of bed that day was your flourish you know what i'm saying like right. that's where you were mm -hmm. and that's how you flourished that day um, and we have to just count those, those little grateful moments of, of overcoming little things and really big things. And I, I have to think daily for myself sometimes, like, mm -hmm. okay, today, this is what I'm doing today. <laughs> I'm so yep. <laughs> today. So, yeah. Take it, you know, hour by hour, day by day, week by yep. week. And sometimes yes. that's what it takes for us to, you know, understand and appreciate where we are and honor the season that we're in. Yep. So um, I think that's a huge part of what I kind of, I also tell other people all the time is, you know, it may not be the best season in the world of life right now, but if you honor where you're at, mm -hmm. um, there'll be other opportunities where you can flourish. Right. So that's really kind of where, um, you know, really the heart of what I got from just that um, snippet of definition. So thank you, Tavia. Yeah. Like that was very, yeah, very I good. I had to really think about flourish. I really <laughs> thought hard about it because I was like, honestly, I'm in a down swing, but then I'm uh, I'm coming back up. And so I know I'm like, I I, I feel like there's always the, the there's always the moment where you're back in a good place, you know, especially if you're a person of faith and you pray and you really look at the good parts of life, even when you're having the hard moments and try to be more positive and upbuilding to other people and encouraging to other people, then it helps you when, wherever you're at, it helps you make it through whatever you're going through. Oh, I love that. I know we talk a lot about uh, that on uh, the clubhouse conversation. Cicely, feel free to chime in there. Cause I know we've had several conversations in regards to this ebb and flow, um, just kind yeah. of fill us up and send us out kind of moments. <laughs> We've had a lot of church moments. Yes. <laughs> a lot of church moments. Yes. <laughs> from the book of Sicily. And <laughs> book of Daniel. <laughs> book of Daniel has been, been wide open this month. <laughs> but no, yeah. like I love that you said that we literally talked about this um, on Clubhouse this month, that mm -hmm. a lot of times we get caught up in just kind of thinking about flourishing as what we have or all that we've been able to mm -hmm. to accomplish, which is a part of it, but then also not taking that time to realize like when you're in the downswing, like you said, or when you're just being, sometimes you're not up, you're not down. You're just, you're just there, right? Like you just mm -hmm. made it. Yeah. It was okay day that we don't take the time to celebrate that part of it. So that's the part where we kind of, I don't know. It's not like, I wouldn't say it's missing your blessing necessarily, but it's kind of just like missing the time to relish in that moment. 
Like we're always very much, you know, what's the next thing? What's the next goal I have to achieve? What's the next, you know, money thing I have to do? It's always so much of that. But I think that's more society. Like I think if society didn't, you know, build the pressure on that, we wouldn't pressure that onto ourselves. But I think that's so important to just, you know, exist sometimes. Like we don't have to be living for deadlines. We don't have to be living to, you know, cross this imaginary race line. We don't have to be living to finish this race and to, you know, beat everybody. We just sometimes, can we just exist? Like, can we just, can we just live? Like, can we just, just be here? Can we just marinate in the sauce a little bit? Like, <laughs> can we just do that? Right. Um, and that actually brought up a question for me, just in like what you were saying for, so what would you say so far in this season of flourishing, what's been kind of, I guess, the most profound lesson for you? So what have you learned and just kind of what have you taken away from this season of flourishing? I think, I, I, I think for me, it has been more about letting go of things. Like, I know that sounds crazy, but sometimes we give something so much, like we pour all the love and, you know, everything into whatever it may be a relationship. It may be a job. It may, it could be anything that we've just really loved and given our all to and it don't work. <laughs> it don't work out and we have to let it go. And I think in my season, the flourish for me is still knowing that you can love and let go. Like you, you don't, don't think of it as failure. Um, and I think I was telling Danielle about this. We can't think about things as failure. I didn't, I didn't, and mine personally comes from foster care experience because this is my first experience with foster care. And I did have to let my foster son go. Um, and he was with us for a year and that was hard. And I was like, and it didn't end well. Like it, it didn't end like this beautiful story. I thought it would, it was really hard. It was, um, it was the reality of foster care. And I felt like a failure. And I was like, thinking back, I was like, but this little boy was loved for a year. He got things he needed. When he came to us, he was this way. When he left, he was this way. This was his pit stop. This is where he gathered many blessings and there was no failure. Maybe it didn't end the way I wanted to, but loving him was letting him go. And so I think for me, afterward, I'm ready to do this again. I know this sounds crazy, but I'm ready to, to take in the next child and know going forward that that I'm helping them through their moment to flourish. It's not really about me I'm helping them through their moment so they can flourish later in their life. And maybe, maybe they'll look back and thank you. Maybe they won't, but that's part of the gift you get with foster care. So for me, that was my big thing this season is let my foster son um, go on to his next foster assignment. And it was rough. It was very, cause it was, it was rough. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think that is just, that's a beautiful testament. And it's so important as well. And I love just how you said it was kind of like you had your journey and that like, you know, you just had to let him go to go on his journey as well. I mean, that yep. brought some tears to my, that was the book of Tavia speaking to right? us. <laughs> I know. I was just like, oh, don't cry, Danielle. Oh, don't cry. And I was like, oh, no, baby, I gotta go. Oh, yeah, like you said, just the year that you all showed him love, the year that he was in your family, I'm sure he made an impact on you, on your daughter, mm -hmm. on your husband. So, I mean, there's so many lessons and so much growth there as well. Mm -hmm. So that's a beautiful testament. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I think we all can learn something from it because we've all had to let something go or mm -hmm. someone or something. And it, I think I think we look at it as so negative sometimes like, oh, like that didn't work. Like, you know, that relationship didn't work or, or, or you know, this friendship went left or, you know, whatever it's like. But if you really I've learned, like if you really look back, it wasn't bad. You there's always these beautiful moments. Um, there's beautiful moments. And that's what you kind of got to latch on to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, holding on to the joy, right? Yep. Holding on to mm -hmm. joy. I absolutely love that. Oh my goodness, this has been like so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I have enjoyed this so much. Uh, Me too. This is something that I just feel very passionate about when we're in places of our lives and we understand when the pivot, when we have to pivot and understanding that the pivot is probably our in our best interest versus staying stagnant where we are. Mm -hmm. And that's definitely something that I, I can completely attest to in learning how to pivot better throughout life so that I'm not so maybe disappointed or upset or the feelings of failure in those pivots. It's no, there's another opportunity, there's another way. I should be more happy about the other path than I am about leaving something that is no longer serving me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that is something too that I, 
I really encourage women out there who are in places of tech, who are women creatives out in the field, when that place, wherever that place is for you, isn't serving you, know that there is another way. Know, and you may not be able to see that path directly, but know that there is another way. So Definitely. that is something that I just want to, you know, really deep dive, give back to the tech community, to the creative community when we feel stuck, when yeah. we feel like we don't have options or we have less. Or in those places, as you mentioned before, Tavia, that, you know, we feel like we failed. Um, we feel like we failed people. We feel like we failed situations, things along those lines. And it really is a matter of I did the best that I could in the mm -hmm. moment. And that is honorable enough for me to move forth. Right. Um, and that's just hard. It's it's yeah. not easy. It no. is not pie. <laughs> no. It is not pie by by any means. Um, in fact, it's the other pie. It's more complicated. So <laughs> I think it's really interesting that you know we we walk into these situations and it's kind of armored feel, if you will. I love that Tavia mentioned, you know, kind of being the token black girl, right? In a lot oh. of situations. And <laughs> I am I am completely can attest in some of those as well. And you know, it's like an almost like an armor, you know. A, a, a wielded maiden, if you will, that we have to put on in some areas and we have to come out knowing how heavy it is, but knowing that we came out safe. Yeah. And I think that's the part that we we forget. Like we put on this armor, we walk into the world, but at the end of the day, it may feel heavy, but we can take it off because we know we're safe. The parts yeah. that we need to protect it, we're safe. Um, and that's that could, that could be interpreted a lot of different ways, but that's something I feel like for a lot of women who are walking into spaces where they don't see that representation in tech, they don't see that representation in the creative offices, they don't see that representation in the spaces they walk into on a regular basis, that can be very intimidating. And so that weight, as much as we put that weight on ourselves in some areas, that weight becomes real heavy from the outside influences too. And I just want to really give full attestment to the women who are out there wearing that weight. Mm -hmm that it's possible for you to take it off and to feel free from that. But also understand that uh, too, there's options for you to not even want to feel the need to put on that armor. Yeah. So I understand why you wear it, but sometimes we also gotta really calculate, is it the best thing for us? Does it keep us truly safe when we walk into spaces feeling like we need to put on or carry or protect ourselves in that way, whether physically or emotionally, however, um, but yeah, I just really appreciate you saying that, Tavia, because there's a lot of women who feel this way mm -hmm. um, in some of the spaces that they're in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, good leadership is really important nowadays. And I, I I learned that we can choose. I think sometimes we feel like we can't, but we, we got choices. Mm -hmm. We got talent. We got choices. We were creative, like just got to believe in ourselves and step out on faith sometime and, and do what we have to do what was best for you as an individual and your mm -hmm. family. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can completely attest to that. I, me and Cicely, you know, both come from the space of single motherhood and walking and leaning into that lifestyle for a long time before we actually uh, uh, paired off. <laughs> so I think it's really interesting that, you know, that mindset too. walking mm -hmm. into walking into a space where there's really nothing um, kind of, uh, Nothing as not as many options available to us, mm -hmm. um, more in an obligation mind in a survival mode. There we go. I was trying to think of what the word was yep. in survival mode. And then we start kind of better understanding that, oh, I have options now. The more that I've, you know, matured, the more that I've grown, the more that I've experienced other life experiences, I realize now that I have better choices or other choices outside of outside of staying in mm -hmm. that survival mode. And that not only works in the single parent sphere, that can be applied to corporate living, that can be applied to the way that we do our career, the way that we jump into relationships, the way that we eat even. Um, so there's so many different ways that we can apply that same mindset in other areas of life. So um, flourishing is such a big part of that process. As you mentioned before, it's that highs and the lows, but even in the regular day to day, like nothing happened. It was uneventful. <laughs> I, I kind of appreciate those days. Right? <laughs> <I do>. right? <laughs> Today was a good day. Nothing, nothing, good, nothing bad happened. <laughs> uh, shout out to Alex Trimble for today is a good day. By the way, yes. hashtag today is a good day. Um, I think it's really interesting that as we talk about these moments, we also are, again, kind of, you know, life sharing, sharing parts of ourselves and our stories that we hope inspire and encourage other women. So, Tavia, tell us a little bit more about 
what you do. Like you are a content writer, you do content creation, mm -hmm. you do things about, I would love for you, for you to share more about wordsmith and the play on words. Uh, <laughs> I got to that name. <laughs> yes, yes. So wordsmith, um, wordsmith, it didn't have a name for years. It was, um, just kind of like a little side hustle I did for family and friends, resumes. It started with an obituary. It started with one obituary from a friend whose mother had passed away from breast cancer and while her mother was really sick, it was, it, she was, it was just her and her mom. She didn't plan anything. It was very devastating when her mother died. It was all she had. And so it was kind of like all of her family and friends, her friends coming together and putting together a memorial and a memorial service and things. So I was put in charge of the obituaries because um, everybody's like, oh, you're, you're a writer. You can do that. And I never wrote an obituary. And I remember, I remember just thinking like, make it about, make it about how she lived. Like, it doesn't have to be sad. Make it about how she lives. So I sat with my friend for like several hours. I asked her about stories. Like we laugh, we cry, we talk. And um, that's how it started. And so I write these really personal obituaries. They're not, you know, he lived, he died, he, he worked at the bank. Like it's more like I had to write one about their lives and it's, they're really honest. So I'm like, if you want me to lie in these obituaries, it's not what I do. <laughs> I had to write one for my uncle last month and my uncle was an alcoholic. I didn't put he was alcoholic, but I say he, he, he battled with many struggles in his life and that made him have make some decisions that weren't in his best interest. Like that was my line and my family respected it because that was his truth. He was a great person, but he struggled with addiction. So I keep it real in these obituaries. I make it about their life, the fun things about them, the funny things, the quirky things. Um, they're really picture, like pictures inside of them. And um, I design them. Danielle has helped me with graphic design so much in the past year. Like, she know. I think even today, I was like, does this suck? <laughs> is this pretty? <laughs> Did I do horrible on this one? But she has helped me get this confidence a little bit more confidence about um being creative and putting together actual designs um and what's funny i think in college you were my go-to like in the lab i'm like can you help me with adobe like i don't know how to do this <laughs> oh man i don't want to toot that horn but yes i was going all the way back to adobe. it was fun <laughs> adobe so i do obituaries that's how i started and it kind of went into resumes and business letters and it just kind of grows every year to more and more things um, that I'm learning to do or know how to do. And I kind of think writing and creativity, all of that together, is just kind of a natural thing that comes to you. I can't really explain it. Yeah, we went to school. But when you went to school, it's like you had this something in you that knew how to do this. Like, mm -hmm. I can't explain it. It's just like we always mm -hmm. knew how to do it. It just put the formalities to it. So it's been mm -hmm. really fun um, kind of branching out into social media management and social media content creation and like ideas like I am a person I think of a business idea like every day never would do it but I do I'm like one of those my mind just does this all day and I'm like oh I wish this was invented <laughs> so to actually take all of that busyness and like put it into helping somebody with their business or with you know their organization um a good cool way to be different you know I always love contribute into that it's a it's like this really good vibe feeling you get when you're contributing to someone else's overall progress and learning and uh, and I say learning um sometimes I think we hear learning and be like I don't know what she's doing no I know what I'm doing I'm just getting better at it and so <laughs> when I'm I'm literally watching it is Danielle designs things I'm like that's beautiful like how does she layer that like I'm taking notes at all times on how to just get better at doing things because we all can improve in some way. And um, so, yep, I, I write. I write all kind of things. Um, I wrote a resume cover letter um, today. That was one of my clients. Um, there, I have a client who does interior design and I do all of her social media content and management. And so I love the aspect of like, working with the orchestra one day and an interior de designer the next day and, you know, a web designer this day and doing copy this day. Like, it's so cool that you, it kind of gives you still the journalism feel because you're doing something different and talking to different people and taking in different pieces of knowledge every day. So I really love the versatility of Wordsmith. Now I got the name, Daniel said something about the name. I was Tavia Green, like throughout. 
that was my maiden name, Kavy Green. Even when I got married, I married Eddie Smith. I did not change my um, I didn't change my byline, and then I was real lazy and I didn't change my legal name for like five years. Like I did not. <laughs> I kept saying, I'm gonna go do it, I'm gonna go do it, I'm gonna go do it. Did not do it for like five years. So my husband, he he just like he never let that go. He's like, oh, you didn't want my name, you didn't want my last name. I was like, I was just being lazy. So I finally went and changed my last name to Smith and that's kind of when it all came together when I was thinking of a name. I was like, what could I, what do I, I then I was wordsmith. And so <laughs> I like words. My last name Smith, wordsmith. And so the S in wordsmith is capitalized because that's my actual legal last name now after, you know, finally changing it. <laughs> shout out to Addie for making that happen, bro. Yes, shout out to <laughs> uh, yeah. I absolutely love that. I love the story behind that. It makes me just giggle every time. Girl. I'm just like, ooh, I'm so punny. Like, this just works. I know. It's such a pun. <laughs> But yeah, it's been cool. And and Daniel's really encouraged me to just like, I was like, how how do I? Because I went to bartending school several years ago, and I like to make cocktails. Like, I love to put together stuff and make it pretty. My friends laugh at me because I'm like, it needs a garnish. It needs a garnish. It needs enough ice. Like, I'm like, you're not gonna put that in a styrofoam cup. We're gonna put it in the correct glass. <laughs> Now, some drinks you do need a red cup for, so. but but some, when we're doing martinis, we're going to have a martini glass. So they always pick at me and laugh at me because I always have to have the right glass and the right garnish. But it does, my friend, she's like, it does make me feel special that you make this pretty drink for me. Aww. I'm going to drink it fast, but it does make me feel <laughs> good. So um, I'm enjoying, like, getting that aspect and then being creative with it and doing um tasting with Tavia um with Danielle and um making drinks and having themes it's been really fun so I've, I've had a lot of fun this last year um doing um just doing it on my own wordsmith writing services and meeting new clients it's been real cool oh man I, like I'm so excited yeah. for the journey ahead because I just feel like yeah. you have so many things going and so many amazing good strong things it's that feeling like you mentioned before, and I know Cicely kind of relates to this too, of doing something new every day, but also within the realm of, of genius that you are able to infuse in everything every day. So being able to touch a different client, you know, a web design, a web design client, a, an orchestra, um, things along those lines, being able to kind of have a hand in someone else's success, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's what makes it so cool and honorable. That's the reason why I love being a creative and I love being able to use um, the technology background that I have to help other people be creative when they feel like they can't or are not capable or things along those lines. It's also that instillment of value. It, it's that support system that you create with someone else who doesn't know how to do what you do, but they're leaning on you and you're leaning on them. And it's kind of like this beautiful, ever flowing relationship of trust that you're building um, with people who didn't know you the next day or didn't know you the week before. Um, and I love to just speaking all of that encouragement. I do this with Tavia often. We speak into each other a lot. So, you know, if we're we on Slack one day and we just we're not even talking about work at this point. We're just, you know, in life. Yes. And, uh, we, <laughs> it's, it's struggle today. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's just it's just real. And I really appreciate that type of um one-on-one -on -one, iron sharpens iron in a lot of way, which is what Cicely also is for me. So we we kind of do um, life in this way. Um, and I think it's really cool that, you know, as a creative, as a person in tech, we get to make kind of define our own destinies by doing that. It's not defined by our paycheck. It's not defined by the stuff we own. It's not defined by necessarily the experiences. It's defined by what we choose to wake up and simply be every single day. And that is something that is very powerful, right? When we think about just waking up and being, um, a lot of people don't feel like they have that choice to simply be. But here we are standing in these spaces telling other women, yes, they can. So I just want to also, you know, stand up and and really push that as well for people who are in those same or familiar spaces. Um, Tavi, I just absolutely love this. Like, this has been like so much fun. I've I totally enjoy enjoyed this. doing this with you. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, like, you know, we're all Hilltoppers, so go Hilltoppers. Right. Um, it's just one of those situations where other women connect with other women connect other women and I feel like that's exactly what the three of us kind of represent in different areas of our life so um yeah find you that tribe y'all because this is mine <laughs> <laughs> I love it I love it um okay so I think we're gonna move straight into our flash 
questionnaire. But before we get to that, Tavia, how can people find you, use you for Wordsmith Writing Services? You can check my website out. Um, it's at www.wordsmithwritingts for Tavia Smith dot com. And I am on Instagram at by.wordsmith.writing. That is awesome. that is my that is my um social stuff. Woo! Okay, so y'all, I'm gonna be sharing all this, of course, in our episode and all the um bio things that come along with it. Um, but yeah, let's get into this uh, flash questionnaire. You could say the first thing that comes to your mind as uh, Cicely reviews these um, questions. It's kind of the hot seat moment. Ooh, okay. um, <laughs> we won't scare you. <laughs> All right. Well, she said we won't scare you. I'm not agreeing to that. That's what Danielle oh, no, is. I'm, I'm just kidding. I am just kidding. No promises. People are so worried and like anxious about it. I'm like, see, y'all ain't got nothing to worry about. But all right, <laughs> I'll get into the first one. So something new you learned in the past year, um, a hobby, fun fact. You already told us an amazing life lesson. So hobby, fun fact, just something fun that you kind of got to do for yourself. Ooh, something fun. I really got into makeup this year. I really did because I do not like, I have always been a person who likes to be behind the camera, like uh, taking pictures and video. Then when I was like, no, nah, I'm going to have to show my face. And honestly, if I'm being 100% honest, I have skin issues. I have eczema, hyperpigmentation. So I have been practicing the face beats all year. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I've been on my YouTube university and I have been practicing. So I, I love, love some welcome, makeup. Welcome to the world. Welcome. Yeah, I love it. I love some makeup. I love that. What is your favorite vacation or getaway spot? Ooh, I like the beach. I know that's real cliche, but I just really like anywhere where there's water. Um, I cannot swim, but I just, <laughs> I like there. the peacefulness. <laughs> It gives me like a good ocean and I don't know, it's a spiritual thing for me. Nature, Absolutely. anywhere like just where I can just stand and just look at his awesomeness and pray and get back to a centered good place. I I love the beach is kind of my place to do that. Just look out and no small you know, <laughs> I ain't getting the water, but <laughs> just, just dip a toe in, just dip a little toe. The toes, in. Yes. That's all we're doing. <laughs> all right, sweet snacks or savory snacks? Sweet, that's that's my problem. I, love <laughs> <laughs> I got a cookie order going right now. We just got a crumble. So I had never heard of crumble. <laughs> that was it's fire. Yep, see, that's why I be staying away. Like, I had to take DoorDash off of my phone for that mm. reason. But here we are um, harry potter or star wars okay don't beat me up i'm neither because i'm not really a sci-fi person okay but i used to love some um lost in space like the black and white one okay. i'm like vintage yes. I like, zone. like i'll do that but i'm i'm a person like i i have to focus real hard to understand and i ask a lot of questions when i watch tv and my husband would be like Let's just turn. And I'm like, no, right. who is this? Why is his face look like and he's like, no, it's not fun. Oh, so I'm, I right. ask too many sci-fi questions for anybody to actually want to watch it with me <laughs> and explain it to me. I would on that's how I am with Star Wars. It's just too much going on, too much backstory. Just count me out because I just I can't keep up. Oh man, I'm gonna make <laughs> a Venn diagram. I'm just gonna make you it. Think if you make a Venn diagram and I can actually understand it, Danielle, then I might become a fan because I still like it's been years and I just I can't get it. I don't understand how it's all interconnected. I don't. And then they keep coming out with new ones, and I'm like, I gotta go mm -hmm. all the way back to the beginning. Uh, right. Yeah, and they're <laughs> branching <laughs> off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Disney Plus after... like what launched like six different shows now that are branched off of different canon pieces of Star Wars. It's too much. It's like mind boggling it's right too now. Much. It's too mm -hmm. much. <laughs> I agree. All right. Um, <laughs> digital books or physical books? Um, I really love paper and like the feel and smell of it. Um, I like the digital. I, I will say paper books if I'm just doing paper now. If it's digital, I'm gonna do an audible. I know that's like totally yeah. the opposite ends of the spectrum. So it's either a physical book or audible. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, and if you can go back in time, where would you go and whom would you see? Oh, that's a good question. It's you know sometimes as a black person you want to go back past the fifties, but then you'd be like, I don't know. Right? <laughs> There's a lot of those. <laughs> I said, Man, I not that point up, but I was like, yeah, I was like, okay, because I do want to go back and like I would love to see like 
someone perform live, like, you know, Ella Fitzgerald or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I would love to see a live performance yeah. by Billie Holiday or something, but I don't really want to go back. I'm with that you. I'm I just want to see them. Can I, can I come back? Can I, can I come back? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love to see live those those like some a classical live performance by like Billie Holiday or something. Mm-hmm. And then you know, come on back. I love that me. answer. I love that with the caveat, but I got to come back. Right after. Come back. Right. 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 back to the future. <laughs> yeah. I love that. What are your love? La- what is your love language or love languages? Okay, my love language is gifts gifts of service or um how do you say it? Um, my husband bringing me a cup of coffee is like the sweetest thing to me. Like Aww. my day is made for Aww. a cup of tea. Like just to, like if he sees I'm starting work and he'll, give me, I love that. Like it's just really small little acts of service to show you care. Mm-hmm. I love that. From, yeah, and for me, I'm a gift giving person. Like I like to show people like they mean a lot to me. Um, so I. And my gifts are usually like something somebody needs. So someone's sick, I'll make them a big thing of hotty toddy or soup or something to take to them. So I kind of, I'm kind of, I guess mine would be acts of service and gifts as well. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Uh, To attest to that, Tavia gave me uh, a a succulent plant with the tag, (laughs) life would suck without you. I love that. I can attest to the gift giving. I love it. I think a lot of people think just because like what you like to receive is is not always the same as what you like to give. Like just how you said you love the acts of service, but you prefer to give gifts to people, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not always the same. So you can have a love language that you like to receive and the love language that you like to give. And like that, it makes you feel good in different ways. So Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. And then last but not least, what is the best part of being a grown up? For me, the best part is, and it's probably not that great that I do this, but I can eat what I want and go to bed when I want. I used, to, I used to be that kid. I don't want to go to bed. I got, I'm getting it all back with my daughter. But I can go to bed when I want. So if I want to stay up and burn the midnight order 2 a.m. and work on stuff, I can. It's not yeah. a good idea, but I'm going to do it. And if I want to have a glass of wine and some cookies for dinner, I'm going to do it. I'm, I might suffer for it, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it, and I I'm love it. it. That's the adult part. We can That's do it, and then part. we know the consequences, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to do it anyway. I love it. <laughs> I love it. But see, that wasn't that, that, that like, concludes the, the lightning round. But that, yes, I, mean, I love great, that. Great <laughs> I oh love it. It's hilarious. This has been so much fun. Thank I so appreciated this, Tavia. Thank you so much for your time and your energy thank you. and your thank story. Thank you, guys. Y'all are just good vibes. Like, I love y'all both. Y'all are good vibes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Interconnected. Interconnected. Yes. I, I love it. Um, <laughs> this has been a real treat for me. Um, so... Okay, for fun, is there anything you want to ask me in the hot seat while I'm sitting here? I'm just going to flash myself and then see what happens. Anybody? Okay. This is for both of y'all because y'all both know me so well. Okay, we can ask questions. Okay, let me see. Um, <laughs> I, one of the questions that you guys asked me, I would like to know your answer, Danielle. What are the things you've learned in this season? Like, what are what are some things you've taken away from your season? Oh my gosh. Um, where do I start? Um, <laughs> let, uh, get out of my own way. Uh, that would be one. Um, a lot of self doubt, put down the self doubt, put, you know, mm-hmm. I don't have to bury it, but, you know, process that self doubt. Um, being open to being open to the idea of kind of like what you went through, Tavia, just being open to the idea that what you contributed to someone else may not be someone else's finish. Your finish is someone else's start. And so that is something that I have specifically learned in this season um, is that even though we may go through some really grueling things, knowing that we get to that part where we may have to, you know, part ways, doesn't mean that that's gone forever. Um, There's always a new season that happens at the end of someone else's season. And so that's something that I've been carrying around with me, um, especially in this season in the past few months. That's awesome. I love that. Fun question for you. If you got if someone gave you a hundred thousand dollars right now, what's your first purchase? Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wouldn't even be for me. I'd probably purchase something in regards. Actually, I know exactly what I'd do. I'd put at least five to ten K away for each of my children for college. 
Mm. Um, that's probably the first thing that I would do. This is something that's been a personal goal for me. We have four. And so how do you disperse money out that way? So this is very kind of surreal. I've been building that equity over the years for our kids to have that type of, um, uh, you know, access to, to funds. So I want to be able to, to do that. I think that would be kind of fun. And then the second thing that I would purchase is probably something that would be an investment for the business. So maybe that's a space, maybe that's an office space, maybe that's, um, maybe not, maybe, um, I've always had this dream of um, owning a print shop one day. And so I like a mom and pop print shop, nothing super commercial, um, just something kind of simple and local every day. Hey, what's up, Danielle, like your shop, let's print some banners or something. Cool. I love that. I have a question for Cecily real quick. Yes, ma'am. Okay, (laughs) if you could have one, like, talent, like, you can do this better than anybody. What would your talent be? You, you, you can't have it now, so it got to be something new. What would your new talent be? <laughs> <laughs> ooh, um, ooh, that's a good one. To actually be able to successfully multitask, like not just multitask ooh. where we're like running around with our heads cut off and thinking that we're multitasking. Yeah. I mean, literally being able to do multiple things well simultaneously. That's what I would want. To do. That is a beautiful talent. <laughs> that is a good answer. Semi-tasking. I don't mean multitasking. I mean semi. <laughs> I'm not a multitasker. I, I promise. I'm that. a semi-tasker. Yeah. <laughs> I know this was fun for Tavia because she loves asking questions, so I oh, had to yeah. give her give her the floor. <laughs> it's the journalism. Yes, the hard-hitting journalism. <laughs> I love it. Look, I'm going to ask both of y'all a question. What are y'all drinking on after the show? (laughs) Ooh, that's a good question. Ooh, that's a good one. Danielle, I don't know if you saw. I got some fresh bourbon. Last time I came to Kentucky, I got some fresh. I had to come all the way to Louisville to get it, but I got some. (laughs) So I may pop that open and um, get my first taste of fresh bourbon. Oh, that is so good so yummy Mm -hmm. love 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 um i'm gonna have to like break down i want to do the uh, gambler punch that's inside the derby Mm -hmm. um digital recipes that we did um Mm -hmm. so if y'all haven't already checked that out we still have it on um my blog right now lexoctane.com so check that out uh, it is literally recipes that are uh, kind of uh, curated that were curated from like country country was it country living town um, and town and country there you go um town and country and then we kind of like docked it up a little bit with some couple mm-hmm. different um things and then release that um mm-hmm. just as a freebie for people around derby time but these are cocktails that will be around forever you can use them all summer mm-hmm. and i so. did a taste with tell you that i made all of them and um the gambler punch you know I, mean, I get requested that when my when my friends come over now can you whip up some gambler punch i'm like i really don't have fresh mint just like all the time but <laughs> <laughs> you make it work. I'm, I'll go get some mint and some lemons and we'll make it happen. <laughs> I, love that. That I need to get into this then. I need to look at that this weekend. Um, yeah, I'm I'm- I am totally, yeah, that's it. You got to check that's that out. Me. That's really good. Um, Sicily is good. I'm t- actually taste testing right now the Blackberry L8. Um, they just came out Ooh. like literally like what, a week ago? No. So, um, L8's typically the ginger ale. Uh, they come out with seasonal flavors like um, orange and cherry and this one's blackberry and it's like it's a it's not as sweet as i thought it was going to be it is sweet but it's not as sweet as i thought it was going to be so uh kudos la uh endorse um because <laughs> it's not this, that was actually really good i was surprised by that one <laughs> well danielle's just like you know come on sponsor me right here mm-hmm. I'm on LA. Don't play. <laughs> they should you always sipping on one they yeah. should <laughs> really <laughs> The ambassador, the brand yeah. ambassador. Now. They're sugar free is my go to. Like I just got that's that's it. It works so well with the rest of my life. But um, yeah, uh, I really have enjoyed this. Me I'm too. going to uh, wrap this up and really just thank everyone for listening to the More Than Graphics podcast. Uh, we definitely continue uh, want you to continue to subscribe and follow us wherever you listen to podcasts and to send us your feedback on Facebook or Twitter on how these life stories that we've just been sharing today um, in virtual safe spaces that we continue to create are helping you navigate, empower, or encourage you. Um, Be sure to check out the MTG podcast website at mtgthepodcast.com and subscribe to our emails for exclusive behind the scene moments like Clubhouse. That's every Tuesday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. 
So uh, from all of us to all of you, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. See you next time. <laughs> Thank you.